It's the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. From the Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. One and four, Northeastern takes on seven and two, West Virginia. The Mountaineers number nine, according to the AP, number eight in the coaches' poll. Hi, friends, and a very pleasant good day. Sitting six feet away is uh, Warren Baker. And Warren, we've had to learn that uh, because of the pandemic, whenever you write things down, your date book, you got to do them in pencil, not, not pen. You certainly do. Everybody's having to make a lot of changes. It's happening across the country, and especially right here with West Virginia. Yeah, West Virginia was supposed to play Buffalo today. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for Northeastern. No seniors on the roster. One of their key sophomores is Tyson Walker, a little guy with a big heart and a big personality. Yeah, he's an all-around great player, leads this team in scoring, assists, and steals. He is the engine that makes this car go. Miles McBride, the uh, 6'2 sophomore from West Virginia out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And Miles is the quarterback for West Virginia. Very important that he stays on the floor. You saw what happened to Kansas when he left the floor. It hurt the Mountaineers. He needs to be there. Uh, Bill Cohen, the head coach of Northeastern, his 15th year leading the Huskies. 242 wins. He's eight away from the all-time mark set by Jim Calhoun, a number of 250. And for Bob Huggins, 14th year at West Virginia, 298 wins as the head coach of the Mountaineers. So glad you could join us. Northeastern flying out of the Boston area yesterday. Early day for both. By the way, this Northeastern team is made up of quite a few players from outside the United States. As a matter of fact, seven of the 11 Northeastern players are from outside the United States. And the Mountaineers open with the ball. And Northeastern starts man to man. And it kicked out of bounds by Strong. Yeah, set play, Oscar Shebray trying to go inside immediately to Derek Culver, see if West Virginia can take advantage of that height inside. And that Matthews will trigger the play. And McBride. 30% shooter from outside the arc. This 14-footer no good on the rebound for Strong. Stuka. That's what they do well. They shoot it from, from outside and behind the arc. Stuka knocks it down. 3-0 Northeastern. Stuka, 6-7 freshman. Keys for Northeastern, they have to match West Virginia's physicality, and they need to take care of the ball. They've been turning it over quite a bit, but they need to take care of the ball, and that'll be important for them. Well, and keys for West Virginia now. West Virginia really needs to dominate inside. They should be able to handle everything inside, and they need to guard the arc. You know, we saw Stricker knock a three down. West Virginia has to be out there and stop that three-point shooting. After Walker missed the layup. And early, a substitution for the Mountaineers. Bob Huggins unhappy with Sheepway here early. Gabe Osaboyan comes in. Really need to have Sheepway really get on track. He's really struggled this year early on. Matthews, the lob in and Culver puts the Mountaineers up in front early. This uh, Northeastern team, by the way, has a freshman who is quite impressive, Jamil Telford, who's coming off the bench for Northeastern. And they foul. And got Gabe Osaboyan on a grab going down the lane. Osaboyan hit with the first foul of the game. West Virginia really needs to get out in pressure because Northeastern likes to shoot so many threes. Don't let them set. Make them shoot it off the bounce if they're going to shoot it. Stuka. Walker. Floater. 
Boy, that penetration, he was under control, did it nicely without having to worry about charging. McNeil into Culver. And Culver with four quick points. Derek Culver's right hand has improved so much from last year. He seems very comfortable going either way. West Virginia and their man-to-man -man is usually what you would expect. You don't want to be in the zone and have those guys spot up for threes. And the steal from McBride and Culver. Derek Culver from Deuce McBride. West Virginia's pressure being applied, causing that turnover. Derek Culver running the floor. Stuka. Again, they are great spot-up shooters. 40% of the shots they shoot are from three. And Matthews answers. Well, with, if Emmett can get that three going, he's really difficult because he certainly can get to the rim. McBride on Stuka. You can see West Virginia trying to chest up on the defense. And Iboigabun has his first two points. That right back down quickly. Iboigabun made the shot, but did not get back. And Derek Culver running the floor, got an easy two. Boy, eight points for Culver in the first four minutes. Iboigabun. Yep. Traveling. Yeah. 15 54 remaining in the first quarter. West Virginia 13, Northeastern 10. See him when Northeastern beat WVU back in 2003, 91 84 during their one and only meeting. Current WVU assistant coach Ron Everhart was the then Northeastern head coach of the Huskies. Before today's game, I asked him, I said, what did you remember about that day being here at the Coliseum? And he said just how special it was to be with his family, especially his dad, who played basketball at Fairmont State. They're both self-proclaimed basketball junkies. He said just having time with his family and being here in the Coliseum where he grew up coming to games and also where he rebounded for then Bob Huggins, the player, down here on the floor court. And he said just winning that game was the cherry on top of a fantastic family day. Lanny. All right, Amanda, thank you. Yeah, Culver. Culver. Ten points early going. By the way, uh, Ron Everhart also was talking about spending a lot of time in this building watch Warren Baker play basketball. <laughs> yeah, he picked the right guy to watch, though. He watched Tugs. That's why he's such a good coach now. I'll tell you what, wait, Der Derek Culver shooting the ball. <laughs> He looks right-handed, and I, I tell you, that is great to see. Shot missed by Strong, and the strong rebound by Matthews. McCabe is in the game. Ooh. Now James Breeling got a hold inside. That pass was a little, little wide for Culver, but the, uh, there was a foul inside. West Virginia keeps the ball. Yeah, McCabe came in for McNeil. Ronnie Erbehart looking dapper there at the Northeastern coach. And a steal for Northeastern. Walters tied up but yeah. got through. Well, that's not something that Bob Huggins wants to see. You want to get him off of the arc, but you don't want to let him drive down the middle of the lane and get an easy basket. Isaiah Trail has checked in. He's inside with Culver. And Culver. Good block by Strong. Basket is good and a foul. And I thought that was a good call. It looked like McCabe was still leaning a little bit. Northeastern with that block on 
Derek Culver inside. Northeastern only had six blocks coming into the game. Yeah, I think he was moving a little bit. There wasn't a lot of contact. They're going to call it, unless there's a really solid contact. They're going to call a block. Walters from London, England had a chance to tie the game, but fails to do so. He's now 6 of 12 at the free throw line this year. Mountaineers by one. In and out on that shot by McCabe. And Cottrell looked around, saw that he was going to be double teamed, found McCabe. Jordan couldn't get it to go down. Shot no good by Walker. Rebound strong by Cottrell. Matthews. And a steal for Northeastern. Now I think, think that is a charge. Yes, it is. James breathing on the call. Cottrell with good position inside. Against Waga. Yeah. Two fouls apiece early going. Bob Huggins is talking to Emmett Matthews saying that should have been a bounce pass inside. I don't think you'd have had that turnover. You'd have given a good bounce pass. Sherman missed the shot. Corner. Sherman again. Stuka has it stolen by McCabe. Good job by Jordan McCabe getting back. Good, good to see Oscar Sheboy inside. Sheboy's first two points of the game. Mountaineers by three. Mountaineer fans have been waiting to see a lot of that. Want to see a lot more of it. Losing the handle was Walker. West Virginia with numbers. Sherman fouled. Yep. Uh, Jordan McCabe getting back, protect the basket, run the ball down in West Virginia with the ability to run the ball up the floor. Got it down low to Sheebway, and he knew what to do with it. All right, Sherman. From Missouri City, Texas, as his first point of the game. I Sherman, by the way, is 22 of 24 at the free throw line this year. Warren? I spoke to Taz before the game. I said, you're going to shoot it good, uh, good today? He said, yep, I promise. So he's 0 for 2 right now. But uh, here's a guy that we know can light it up once he gets started. 6'4", senior. Pair of free throws. West Virginia with some full court pressure. Northeastern has been known to be careless with the basketball. That's one of the things that Coach Corn was worried about. Says they're turning it over too many times. West Virginia really trying to apply the pressure. Here's Telfort, talented freshman. Stuka trying to hit his third three of the game, but off the iron and Shibwe the rebound. Bounds off that uh, three ball from Sean, McNeil. But there was a foul inside. Northeastern foul ball at number 10. Greg inside. Grabbed Oscar Sheeway. Mountaineer ball inside. Quick shot off the inbound pass, but not a good shot by McNeil. McCabe's got it. And knocked out by, by Walker. 11.53 remaining in the first quarter. Mountaineers lead Northeastern by five.
Thank you. Welcome back to the Coliseum, everyone. Mountaineers have a 1914 lead over Northeastern. So when it comes to recruiting for Northeastern, an important tool for the coaches is their passport. The Huskies have seven international players on their roster, third most in the country. Coach Cohen told me it's quite easy to attract foreign players because NU is in the heart of Boston. And the university has such strong academics with campuses around the globe. Cohen likes what he calls the courage of international players who take that leap of faith to go far away from home to play. All right, Lanny and Bake, so get out your globe. The countries represented by the Huskies include Canada with three players, England, Germany, Croatia, and Nigeria. Wow. I tell you what, that has to be, you know, just so neat for all those kids to be able to get together. And a two. West Virginia had to get a quick shot because the shot clock was at seven. The shot that McNeil shot a while ago that hit the side of the backboard, they accidentally reset the shot clock, so they had to go back and they dropped it to seven, but it didn't matter. McNeil knocked that shot down. Stuka from... Oakville, Ontario, Canada. And at the end of the shot clock, no good. And the pressure that West Virginia put on really, really upset the timing of the Northeastern offense. West Virginia started the game shooting seven of eight, but until McNeil made that, they just made two of their last eight. The thing is, West Virginia would start out seven and eight because they got the ball down low and got some easy baskets for Culver inside. McBride, Amanda, in giving us the list of uh, the international players for Northeastern, and a foul here. Yep, Oshaboyka. foul. Push off with the arm. Good call by the official. Oshaboyan, his second foul of the game. Gabe Oshaboyan had the whole side of the court to himself. He'd been fine, but. As they say, a lot of times got that chicken wing out and pushed off with it. So he'll go to the uh, bench with his second foul. Mountaineers by seven. I was talking about the international players of Northeastern. And Vito Chubrilo, who is from Croatia, he called home because there was an earthquake, a 6.4 earthquake in Croatia earlier today. The report we've gotten from Scott McDonald, the athletic director of, or excuse me, the sports information director from Northeastern, is that uh, Vito was told everything is okay at home concerning his family. And the three. Three point shot. Imanga. And again, that's what they do. They set up. You have to move them off of that arc. Imanga, the sophomore. Nice play by Walker to set Imanga up. Sherman. Culver. Culver with 10 quick points early uh, in the first what, five minutes of the game. Strong rebound there for Iblogobin. Really not a good possession for West Virginia. Taz Sherman had to force that up as the shot clock was running down. Iblogobin, he's fouled by Culver. Yep. Foul is called on Derek Culver. His first personal foul number four. You know, this Northeastern ball club it's kind of you know misleading. They're one and four. They played at Georgia, had Georgia down by 15 in the first half, led by 13 at halftime. Now, mind you, Georgia is still undefeated at this point. The game was close in the second half, and then Northeastern went 10 minutes without scoring, and Georgia was able to pull away at the end. But this crowd played. They went to Syracuse and lost by six in the dome. So that lets you know they lost at Old Dominion. Old Dominion is four and two. They're pretty good. So don't just say that because this team is one and four, they can't compete. 
And Coach Cohen telling us that uh, his team lost its composure in that game against Georgia. Georgia, yeah. He said Georgia finally wore them down, too. From the elbow, Sherman missed the shot. Shibway feeds it back out to Sherman. And off the noggin there of Walters. Yeah. And Taz Sher Sherman's rhythm is really off right now. The last shot that he shot, he shot on the way up. Yeah, he, he's really struggling. Really, really struggling. And knocked out of bounds by Culver. Yeah. Really good, really good box out by Northeastern. They have to do that with the much bigger lineup that West Virginia has. But that was a real, real, had a body on a body on everybody inside. Derry Culver tried to come over the top and tip the ball out of bounds. I think it's a good substitution right now for Matthews to come in right now and uh, take Sherman out. Give him a little break there. Let him catch his legs there and think about it a little bit and come back in. Out of bounds. Going baseline was Walker. Yeah, good job by McBride. Ball goes on the on the line, out of bounds. That's one of those ball security things that I think Coach Cohen was talking about. Says we have some unnecessary turnovers. Although, you know, Tyson Walker, he's the leader. He's going to turn it over some because he has the ball so much. Chubrilo from Croatia is in the game now. McBride to Matthews. And McNeil, 10 seconds, shot clock. Shibway fights his way. And you're right, Landy, when you said fights his way, he had to do it because really Northeastern had pretty good box out. It was just the size of Shibway that was able to get that ball and stick it back down. Chubrilo, Telford. Kicked out by Calvert. So we've got 7.38 remaining in the first half here in the Coliseum, and West Virginia's lead is five over Northeastern. One of the early stories, Derek Culver with 10 points. And the deflection and the turnover favoring the Mountaineers, McBride. Going to the basket with the left hand. And McBride's going to pick up the charge. Foul number five against the Mountaineers. Yep, yeah. the play inside there, you could have gone either way, but the official said McBride charged, and the official's call will stand. West Virginia with a little one-two-two pressure. Oh, that one, two, two pressure. West Virginia dropped back into their man. Chubrilo feeds it off. And the three ball attempt, no good. Tip back, no good. By Imanga. Off the three shot by Walker, 23-18. Boy, Imanga is able to slip inside there and get good position. That was one of the things that... Bob Huggins was upset about when they played Kansas. The Kansas able to get 19 offensive rebounds against West Virginia, and that should not happen. Patrell comes in for Culver. Culver with two fouls. Imanga from Germany, sophomore, and he has five points in the game. Just under seven left, first half. Mm 
Matthews oh, yeah. finds his way to Very, him. very difficult shot by Emmett Matthews. West Virginia with that one, two, two pressure again. Matthews has five. Walker. Yamanga. And Chubrilo. And fouled. This is going to be uh, first foul against Sheepway. I don't think there was a question. There was a foul, but I think Bob Huggins is upset because it was such a late call. And uh, Cottrell is being helped off. Isaiah Cottrell out of Huntington Prep in Huntington, West Virginia. Cottrell was one of the men, young men that really Bob Huggins said we needed to get in the ball game because he's going to be such a big part of our inside game. He was hoping that he could get plenty of quality minutes today. We'll have to see what kind of injury and whether or not Randy Doc Metter can get him back on the court. Let's see if we can see what happened here. Uh, yeah. Couldn't really tell a lot about that. Just kind of came up gimpy, maybe a little twist of the knee. If obviously in some discomfort over there on the side. Yeah, Chubrilo hits one of two. Mountaineers by four. Matthews. Really looking to try to get that ball inside. Northeastern doing a good job about cutting things off inside. Sheepway missed it with the left hand. A lot of traffic inside on that shot. Stuka, two threes in this first half. Thirteen on the shot clock. Walker's shot short. A good shot, good look by Walker. He just couldn't get it to go down. And Matthews missed the layup, but he's going to go to the free throw line with just about five and a half minutes left in the first half. Yeah. He's on Walker. Walker was inside the arc. That's the one thing that Emmett Matthews can really do, and that's get to the rim. Matthews from Tacoma, Washington. And 17 of 19 at the free throw line this year. And six points in this game. Isaiah Cottrell has gone to the uh, locker room. I'm sure they'll probably keep him in through the rest of the half here and see if they can get that knee or that leg back in shape to come back out. Jalen Bridges has checked in now. He's now running the point of that 1-2-2 two, two press. Bridges from Fairmount, West Virginia. And traveling call against Duca. 5-10 left in the half. Now near 7-2. Including an 87-82 loss to number one Gonzaga. And that was a quote unquote makeup game. All these teams forced to change their schedules around because of COVID-19. There is a, uh, a clearinghouse website for college teams to check out who might be available to pick up a, a game, reschedule things. Sheepway. Nice pass. Sheepway just, just a real quick move. Deuce McBride knew it was coming. Really, really good setup. Excellent inside defense by Sheepway that time.
West Virginia with a smaller lineup on the court. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Oh boy. Got a shove inside on Oscar Shibway, trying to clear out some space. The fish is standing right there. I don't think Shibway needed to do that. Well, we had a couple of uh, conference games for the Mountaineers, Christmas break. Hooked up with Northeastern. Northeastern flew out yesterday for this two o'clock game today. Coming out of the Boston area, by the way, in case you're not familiar with Northeastern, it is located in downtown Boston. Stuka. In and out. Northeastern is uh, not too far away from Fenway Park in Boston. Foul here. 357 remaining in the first half. West Virginia 29, Northeastern 21. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Welcome back to the Coliseum. Eight point lead for the Mountaineers. You know, every university has a list of famous alumni and attendees and Northeastern is no different. So before Spotify and Apple Music, there was Napster started by Sean Fanning when he was a student at NU. And of course, that helped pave the way for online music streaming as we know it today. How about Chris Biz Stone, co-founder of Twitter? He attended NU, as did basketball great Reggie Lewis, who went on to play for the Celtics. The Huskies have produced a number of NHL players, including their highest draft pick back in, uh, which was uh, Jamie Oleskiak, who was drafted 14th and previously played up the road for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And how about this one, LL Cool J. He never graduated, but he was awarded an honorary degree in 2014. One of my favorite musicians, Lanny. All right, Amanda, I've got a trivia question for you too. Okay. All right. How many major league ballparks? Ooh. Followed on the shot was McBride, and he'll go to the line for an and one. How many Major League Baseball parks do not have commercial names attached to them? And, and I know you're gonna, you can call Randy, <laughs> and, and your husband Randy will probably help you with the answer. Is this my phone a friend? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's a good question. That, I don't know the answer. That's but a I... spin off of the fact that uh, Northeastern is not, not that far, just over the fens from Fenway Park in Boston. That's right. All right. You stumped me. I'll get back to you on that All one. All right. West Virginia's defense has really tightened up. Northeastern has just one field goal, and that's uh, that 14 25 mark when they hit that. And we're down to three and a little change in the half here. So this is one of those droughts. Off the side of the board by Telfort. Just way too easy. Weak side help. There, there's no answer for that. West Virginia should be able to do that all day. Pressure from the Mountaineers. It'll be a reset for Northeastern. Sheboy with eight. Matthew 7, Culver 10. West Virginia with a full straight, man to man, full court. Strong, short. West Virginia really dominating the boards now. McBride missed the shot. Shibway the rebound. Put back, no good. Walters from London, England. Strong three. Well, when you take chances like West Virginia did, trying to double team, if Northeastern does a good job and passes the ball without turning it over, you can get a good shot. Strong did just now. Three for Matthews? No. Telford shot missed. Telford, great three, uh, great, uh, great shooter outside the arc. Yeah, normally. he really rushed that. He's shooting 71% from behind the arc. The second leading scorer coming off the bench, but did not look good on that last attempt. Missed a game against Old Dominion this year. Also, by the way, Chris Doherty is not playing today because of a lower body injury for Northeastern. 
And the foul here against the Mountaineers right, with a minute Matthews. 23 left. Inside. That's foul number nine. Square inning Mango checks in for the Huskies. Stuka, top scorer to this point for Northeastern with six. West Virginia still with that one, two, two pressure. Jalen Bridges on the point. Walters with a fadeaway, missed it. Strong. You board the board in. All alone underneath and well done. Boy, Walker, you see why he averages five and a half assists a game. Really, really, really good vision. Square in Imanga. Seven points. 35 seconds and a half. Nine on the shot clock. Long three. In and out. And McNeil's attempt. 20 seconds. Northeastern holding for the last shot. Five. <laughs> and it's halftime. And the Mountaineers hoping to uh, improve the record today to eight and two, leading by eight at halftime with Derek Culver off to a quick start in the first half. He had 10 very quick points in the first half. So Culver with 10, Shibwe with eight. And let's go to Amanda. All right, Coach, I know then we, this week in practice you emphasized defense and rebounding. How do you think your team has responded in this first half? Not very well. Not very well. We haven't rebounded it the way we're capable of rebounding it, and we certainly haven't guarded the way we need to guard. I know you've been wanting to see more about Oscar Shibwe. He has eight points so far, ten rebounds. What would you say about his play in this game? He's been better. He's been better, but we can't. you can't miss block outs. You know, you're standing beside a guy. It's not hard to block him out. We, I mean, and we work for three days on blockouts. So we got, we got, uh, we got some muscle memory stuff to do, I guess. All right, coach. Thank you so much. Good luck in the uh -huh. second half. All right. Uh, coming up in a, a bit, sometime during our halftime, we'll try to find some highlights of uh, some of the more positive moments of 2020. Scott, uh, Chuck Scatterday, our producer delved into the uh, archive to see if we could come up with those and we'll see what we've got coming up in a moment here at halftime from the Coliseum. Halftime, the Mountaineers lead by eight. The biggest lead for West Virginia in the first half was 13. For uh, Northeastern Top scorer in the game is uh, Umanga with seven, but Coleman uh, Stuka was an early uh, contributor for Northeastern with six, and we'll get to some highlights for you in, in just a moment. Your thoughts about the first half? Yeah, they did. Stuka came out early and hit some early threes, but I think West Virginia's pressure is beginning to get to Northeastern a little bit. Northeastern has nine turnovers at halftime. They average 16 a game. So West Virginia's pressure is beginning to bother them. Well, keep in mind that Northeastern was four of 10 outside the arc. Yep, and Stuka got it going early. And we said if he gets a chance or if they get a chance to sit on that line out there, they'll knock him down. There's Stuka again. And West Virginia has done a better job since then, but uh, that's what they do well. And Derek Colbert had 10 of the early Mountaineer points. Yeah, Derek Colbert came out playing West Virginia with seven of eight early on, and a lot of it because he was inside. And here, if you're a big man and you run the floor, you get rewarded. And you see that good job by Miles 
uh, Deuce McBride looking at and, uh, Culver, you know, if you run the floor, you get rewarded. That's what he does. So Derek leads all scores at this point. Uh, uh, by the way, Mountaineers one of ten outside the arc in the first half. Anything there that jumps out at you? Yeah, West Virginia really not shooting it that well from the perimeter, obviously. The thing that I do see that's in, in, um, really good from the Mountaineers, they have total of 20 rebounds. Oscar has 10 of those. Oscar Sheepway has 10 rebounds at that time. The rest of the team has 10. So that's encouraging. Mountaineers coming into the game with a record of 7-2, and 1-1 one and one in the Big 12. Northeastern 1-4. and four. Northeastern has uh, Colonial Athletic Association games coming up this weekend in Boston. So 10 for Culver, 8 for Shibwe, and 7 for Emmett Matthews in the first half. Both teams played a good number of players in the first 20 minutes. And uh, we had an injury to be of concern to the Mountaineers in the first half. Isaiah Cottrell. Uh, Amanda, do we know anything? I sure do. He is out for the rest of the game with a lower leg injury. They don't know how severe it is at this point, but do not expect Isaiah Cottrell for the rest of this game. A big blow for the freshman. And did you talk to Bill Cohen? I did. I got some thoughts from uh, Bill Cohen, and he, he said this is what his team needs to do to try to pull off this upset here in Morgan County. He said take care of the basketball. They've had nine turnovers. He's not happy with that. Defensive rebounding is key, and he says they need to execute better against the Mountaineers' full and half-court pressure defense. So those are the things that they're going to be focusing on in the second half to try to erase this deficit and leave Morgantown with an upset over the Mountaineers. Lanny? Amanda, we've got another question for you. Okay. Did you know that today is the 50th anniversary of the beginning of the composing of the song, Take Me Home, Country Roads? I did not, but I love that song. It's played quite often in my home, and I do have an answer to your earlier question. And the answer is, how many Major League ballparks do not have naming rights? It's 10, and I'll tell you, I tried to contact my husband, and I couldn't get a hold of him. My neighbor, I'll give him a shout out, Ryan Tyree texted me, and he said it's 10. And Fenway is the oldest park that does not have a commercial name. Am I correct? Uh, that would seem to be right. Um, <laughs> so well, maybe I've um, stumped you. Lanny doesn't know the I think, answer. I think, I think 10 is wrong, by the way. I think 10 <laughs> is too many. Um, and also, the part of the problem was, is Wrigley a naming rights ballpark, or is it just, it's just a family name? And it's probably just because it's a... It's a family name. I don't think the, the, the gum company got involved there. Um, and, and, then, and then you've got Dodger Stadium, which, by the way, happens to be one of the greatest ballparks in, in all of America. But anyway, back, back to John Denver. Back to John Denver, okay? He and two of his friends on this date in 1970 began composing the song, Take Me Home Country Roads. All right. He didn't finish it till the following day, but... Isn't that interesting that we should be that we should be playing on this auspicious auspicious anniversary? And then earlier in the week, we found out that the, when the Steelers played on Sunday, that was the anniversary of Myron Cope's terrible towel. Towel, yeah. All right, here we go. Back to basketball. <laughs> back to the important stuff, huh? All right, West Virginia coming back out with the pressure, and let's see whether or not. Northeast, you can stay composed and not give that ball up as much. Boy, don't let him get underway. Walker can put light, light it up quickly. Averages 17 a game. Boy, he's starting out good here in the second half. And a quick turn. Boy, not the way Bob Huggins wanted his squad to start out here in the second half. Five points in the first 30 seconds for Northeastern. Foul is on Strong. That Strong. is his third. Strong trying to keep Sheepway from getting position going across the lane. Officials there call the hold.
The officials are James Breeding, Antonio Petty, and Tyler Kump. In close, Culver no good. Foot back there for Sheboy. Northeastern allowed Sheboy just to get too close inside. You got to try to push him out if that's possible, but you let him get right there. He's going to, you know, just eat up the offensive board. Strong, weak. Yep. Did everything but finish it. McNeil from Union, Kentucky. Matthews. Evan Matthews. Matthews has nine. Such a quick first step. Really glides to the hole. West Virginia having trouble shooting it from three. Matthews has the only long range three for West Virginia today. In and out by Stuka from that right corner. West Stuka really had a good look just now. He's going to knock most of those down. West Virginia fortunate. Midway jumper, no good. The rebound. And, and again, back. you have got to try to push him as much as you can to hope he comes over your back. But you let Sheboy get there, and my goodness, he's going to make those all day. Well, Oscar Sheboy with a double double. That's the 12th of his career. Six Good. seconds, shot clock. And there was two on the shot clock when Stuka took that shot. Stuka's had two really good looks. Not able to get either one to go down. Three. Couple of threes for Walker in this first half, in this second half. Somebody lost Walker. Walker's the type of guy that you have to guard him with your entire team. Even if he's not your man, if he's in your area, you and you know, he gets that ball, you've got to go out and get him. Uh, no, no basket. This foul on Strong. And strong and Strong's again. fourth. Strong, strong just not just not strong enough inside. Boy, a nice move by Matthews to get all the way to the hoop. And Culver scores, and we'll go to the line. West Virginia exercising their muscle inside. That is going to take its toll. There is no way that Northeastern can continue to compete with West Virginia getting the ball that close to the rack. And Culver, 63% free throw shooter. And West Virginia keeping up with the pressure. West Virginia in those passing lanes, making it very difficult. Walters. And it's going to be Northeastern's ball. West Virginia really, really good now after the basketball, getting in the lanes. Well, it got right in the middle of that traffic. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Stuka. Well, Stuka had no choice other than fire that up. Sherman shot no good. Matthews puts it back. Yeah, West Virginia just totally controlling that offensive glass now. With West Virginia's bigs inside, 
Matthews able to slip by everybody, get inside and get that stick back. Walter shot and a foul. Yes, that's a charge too. Good job by Deuce McBride. Walter is charged with his second foul of the game. West Virginia leads by 11. There's a timeout. Emmett Matthews doing some good work inside. Now the Mountaineers led by eight at halftime. That lead dissipated to three early in the second half, but now it's up by 11. And Oscar Shibwe plays some high school basketball up in Mercer County, has 12 points in the game. Yeah, and Oscar really inside. Northeastern not doing a good job of trying to push him out. As I said, if he gets that right there, he's going to make those all day. Hey, he has 14 rebounds today. His season high is 16, his career high is 18. So there's a good chance if he keeps working like this, he could end up with 18. And right now we see Northeastern with a little 1 2 2 pressure. West Virginia with no trouble getting across the half court line. Well, Gabe Osaboy really looking for Oscar Sheeve inside. McCabe from outside the arc. And a foul. 14.51 remaining in the second half. West Virginia's muscle inside really just giving Northeastern all types of problems in the paint. Foul number three on Waga. Strong for Northeastern has four. The stoppage of play. Walker goes over to the bench. I don't know what the uh, issue is. Oh, ripped jersey. Yep, Walker has a ripped jersey, like the old tearaway jerseys they used to have in football. <laughs> but he's got to get over there and get another, another top one. And puts on number 13. Replacing the 12 that he had. Taz Sherman finally gets one to go down. Jordan McCabe in at the point now. He's got the uh, job of guarding Walker. And McCabe gets into a foul. Jordan McCabe. Oscar Boyne. Yeah, Gabe got his hand in there and just ripped the jersey up. Ten second shot clock. West Virginia with great rotation here. There it's shot by Yamanga. Shot clock violation. West Virginia did a good job of rotating. They got a double team on Walker, and everybody moved up. Northeastern having to take a wild shot there at the uh, at the buzzer. Oscar Shebray with another rebound. McCabe shot off the iron. Boy, yeah, McCabe's had a couple of good looks. Just couldn't get either one to drop. Matthews out in front of the play pulls it up McCabe. Shibway in close but hit the bottom of the rim. Yeah, Oscar went to the other side. I think he had to lay up on the on the left side if he just stayed there. And good and a foul. As Telford gets his first two points of the game, and Telford coming into this game averaging 13.8 points per game. 
Yep. Got it up high and soft, and that's what you have to do. Telford, one shot. Uh, Telford done a great job this year coming off the bench for Northeastern, but just two points in this game. Yeah, but he's a freshman too and learning, you know. Mm -hmm. Bill Cohen bringing him along slowly. You know, it's good sometimes when you have those guys that come off the bench that can give you a big lift like Telford has been able to do this year. He knows he's going to get his time, and he's making the most of it. Telford from Quebec, Canada, from the Montreal area. And a tie-up. Seems to me that's our first tie-up of the game. Yeah, Sean McNeil dribbled into trouble and had the ball down around his waist. And, you know, you get that ball around your waist, and a bunch of hands can get on it. West Virginia retains possession. Matthews to Colbert. Derek Colbert. Well, Derek made that look a more, little more difficult. He turned to his right first and he, he had it left. He came back and left side again. Yeah, I thought I thought he was going to make the, uh, the, the first shot time. Going, going to his left. Yeah, the first time. He says, ah, I can do it either way. In and out on the shot by Walters. Sherman. And the foul is Matthews does not make the layup. 12 22 left in the second half. Yep. Yep. Derek's so comfortable with that right hand now. He's going to go back to the right. Says, ah, maybe I'll go with my strong hand, lay that thing in with my left. I don't want it to get. I don't want it to get rusty since I've been using my right so much. Matthews from Tacoma, Washington. Twelve points in the game. Now twenty of twenty-two at the free throw line this season. Emmett's had a really solid basketball game today. Thirteen for Matthews. West Virginia keeping with the pressure. Full court man now. Shaquille Walters. And the steal from McCabe. Good job by McCabe. Good move by Sherman. Taz Sherman having trouble getting that outside jumper to go down. Says, I'll take it to the hole. Good defense by McCabe last time down. West Virginia really doing a good job on the defensive end. Knocked out of bounds by Sherman. There's a timeout. 53-37. The Mountaineers lead. Taz Sherman, six points in the game. Little pump fake, straight to the hole. Six point or 16 point lead for the Mountaineers, you know, after a stellar freshman campaign. To say Oscar Sheboy has been in a sophomore slump would be an over exaggeration, but the coaches, they do want to see more production out of their big man. Through the first nine games of this season, he has scored 35 less points and finished with 21 less rebounds than he did through the first nine of last season. Coach Hogan says Oscar just isn't running the way he's capable of and cites that effort last year against Texas at home. As many Mountaineer fans remember, the ball was rolling the length of the court. Oscar ran the whole way down, grabbed the ball, and as it was rolling out of bounds, he grabbed it and came back and dunked it. It was spectacular play. Huggins says he told Oscar that once everyone saw that he could put forth that kind of effort, everyone expects it now, including the coaching staff. And I will say today, that effort, it's been pretty good so far with a 12-point, 15-rebound performance today. So maybe this is the, the come-out game for Oscar as we enter Big 12 play shortly. All right, good stuff, Amanda. Uh, Shibwe uh, playing for Kennedy Christian up in 
Mercer County. Emmett Matthews out of the game right now. Jalen Bridges came in to give him a break. Taz Sherman still having trouble get that outside shot to drop. Anticipation good by McNeil. Uh, Boy, uh, Taz Virginia, Sherman really struggling. He will not have an easier shot than the one he just missed. Derek Culver gave it up to Taz Sherman, and uh, Derek says, if I had known you weren't going to give me an assist, I would have dunked it. <laughs> Is that what he said? Wow, yeah, I'm sure that's what he probably said. it. Thirteen on the shot clock. Culver to McCabe. But yeah, McCabe, shortest player on the court, got caught inside and really just kind of threw one up. Halfway through the second half. Haphazard throw up there by Walker. Mm, good job by Telford to get back there. Yeah, McCabe trying to get, you know, it, it, you like to see the bigs run the floor, and when they run the floor like that, they need to be rewarded. McKay tried to get that ball to cover uh, Culver just a little too far. Sherman out. And McBride will inbound the ball. Or, excuse me. Uh, Johnson inbounding the ball and driving to the hoop and doing a good job of that left hand. McNeil. As uh, Hedrian Johnson has come into the game. Bob has a lot of. Uh, promising Kedrian Johnson he says as soon as he gets acclimated to everything he wants done he can really score the ball too <laughs> yeah Jalen Bridges with the hand checking James Breland the uh, official looked at Hug says I told him three times to stop he said I had to call it after that so official warned him three times. He said, I, you know, I got to call this now. Good by Telford. Good look by Deuce McBride. Catching Bridges inside. That's what you want your point guard to do. Keep his head up. He located Bridges, made an easy pass. First two points of the game for Bridges, the freshman. West Virginia, 38 points in the paint. We'll make it 40 now. 40 to 16 in the paint right now. 59-39, West Virginia leads 8-38 remaining in the second half here on the Big 12 on ESPN+. Plus. I have to try to decide how you're going to do it. Fifty-nine, thirty-nine, West Virginia leads. Do they have one of those cutout pictures of you somewhere in the arena? If it is, it's back in the very back row up here someplace. I don't think. <laughs> They're not going to put me that close to the court. If West Virginia can hold on to win this game, it would be the 18th, 1800th win here as a team. Hugs 889th and Hugs 299th here at WVU. So a lot of important marks to be made today if West Virginia can hang on and win this game. They're up by 20. And also be then one win away from tying Roy Williams for fifth place on the all-time college basketball win list. Jabrilo. Jalen Bridges just a little tardy getting there. Strong. A couple of threes in the game. Northeastern has played man the entire game. They do play some two, three zone, but uh, Coach Cohen has decided no, he's gonna play man all the entire time. Call for what, foul. That's what West Virginia can do. Of course, West Virginia would have been able to get that ball in against the zone as well. 
757 remaining in West Virginia up by 17. Welcome back to the Coliseum, a 17 point lead for the Mountaineers. Just like everybody else in the Coliseum, the TV crew also has to follow COVID protocol. That of course includes wearing masks, but when we get to the Coliseum, we have to all be tested for COVID. And if we pass our test, we are given our press release, press pass to be able to come down to the floor. Now normally a game like this or any other game, I would be allowed to go behind the team benches and listen to what the coaches are saying, but not so much this year. There is basically an imaginary line from basket to basket, and the TV crew has to stay on the opposite side of the benches, and we are not allowed to go past that line. I'm not sure what's going to happen if I actually test the staff here and run across. I'm not want to do that. But the good thing is I do have my own little desk over here where normally there would be fans, but hopefully next season this place will be rocking again. And yeah, you want to see my desk and my producer? There we go. This is my desk. So normally there would be fans here, but this is my little cove here. And again, not allowed to cross over to the benches. I'm afraid what would happen if I actually tried to do that. So, <laughs> Lanny and Bake, I'm just going to stay on this side with you guys. Uh, go ahead and try it. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm the scapegoat. All right, I would actually do it. I do have my tennis shoes on today. I might be able to outrun somebody. All right, Amanda and... Uh... Adrian Johnson with a chance to score his first point as a Mountaineer, but comes up empty at the free throw line. And foul here on, on McBride. Uh, Baked the chance for some of the West Virginia guys to play that. Uh, correction, the foul was, they just made a correction. The foul was on uh, Johnson and not on McBride. Uh, but anyways, going back to the chance for some guys to play for West Virginia that don't normally play, what, what's your mindset uh, under those circumstances? As a player, you mean? Coming yeah, in? Yeah, coming in and you don't play a lot. Well, West Virginia, Bob Huggins has really been wanting to play some more people, but, you know, you play Gonzaga, and, you know, and you're playing the type of competition that they've been playing. He's had to have his main guys so that they get ready to go, too. But... Uh, those guys know, and they've been practicing hard. They know that if they do the right thing, when West Virginia plays well, they'll get in. Well, Johnson having real trouble getting a basket to go down. With 7.07 remaining in the, here's a tweet coming yep, in. Tired tweet coming in. He has not seen much time, but he's getting a chance to come in and play some now. Well, Deuce with a really good look at a little bank shot. Whoa. A little volleyball action by Deuce McBride. That was from behind. Wow. He had one of those in Kansas at Kansas the other night as well. Deuce, his, his anticipation is so good. Yeah, I'd love to go back and see some of the clips of him playing football. He said he was such a good quarterback. That shot short by Bridges. Well, the guys, the guys in, uh, in the dressing room will let Bridges know about that shot later on. Jalen Bridges can really, really shoot the basketball. He just rushed that one. Good to see Ty Freak be able to get in the ball game. Huds is high on him too, said he just needs to learn the system. Out to Walters after he missed the shot and rebound by Waga. Nothing there, Culver. Culver with the one arm, one hand rebound. Oh, 
high three with a good look. Couldn't get it to go down. You know, Bob Huggins right now leaving Deuce McBride in the ball game. Deuce McBride is the guy that can get everybody in the right positions right now. He's that point guard. So that's why he's in the game right now, to try to get these guys, the four guys, well, Culver's out there, but the other guys that don't play that much, make sure that they're in the right positions and doing the right things. And from the other standpoint, Northeastern playing a lot of quality competition. And Bill Cohen hoping that down the line it'll pay major dividends for his club, particularly when it gets into conference play. Ooh. High three was a really, really good look at a three. West Virginia still flying around on defense. That's good to see. And it's Chubrila. If, if you want to earn some minutes playing, come in the game late like that, you need to go out and really hustle on the defensive end. Northeastern in the athletic in the Colonial Athletic Conference foul here stops the clock with 442. Some of the schools that are in the Colonial Athletic Conference, Hofstra, James Madison, Drexel, Towson, Delaware, William and Mary, and they're, they're playing uh, a schedule this year that includes uh, Back to back games on back to back days in the same location. Yeah, I've asked, you know, some coaches about that and they said it's difficult. You know, you, you play at a, at a place and then you have a team come to your place in two, but, you know, it's just the luck of the draw. And I don't know if I would like that or not. Can you imagine, again, West Virginia having to play both games at Kansas and both games at Baylor and not having here any at the Morgantown? But you can see Northeastern's schedule right there and how they do that. Saturday, Sunday in Boston. Oh West Virginia still hitting the boards. Right, seven points in the game. Yep, the points. Uh, Deuce can score. There's no question about that. He can score, but he does so many other things for that ball club. Another Brilo good, with another three attempt. Yeah, another good defensive stop by West Virginia. Three and a half left. Bridges, four points in the game. Another turnover. Deuce can provide with the flush. And Bridges, nine points in the game four in the second half 66 45 the West Virginia lead as the young man from Cincinnati leads the way sixty six forty five McBride checks out with nine points in the game. Wait, you look at him sky on that. Really gets up. Great timing. And then a quick crossover and gets to the hole. And see him stick, stick that thing down. And we've seen him get a lot of assists today, passing the ball, hitting the big guys, running the floor, doing it all. And a NJ in the game for West Virginia. Celebrated a birthday yesterday. And he is raw. But Hudson thinks that he does have a lot of potential. And it's just going to be a slow, slow process. Yeah. Going to be redshirted this year. He'll have plenty of time to catch up. And if he has to play against Oscar and Derek on a daily basis, he will get better. NJ from uh, Senegal played basketball, Huntington Prep in West Virginia. 
252 remaining, so. You know, Bob Huggins is on the ballot for the Naismith Hall of Fame. This is the fourth time I think Hudge deserves to make it. I sure hope they do the right thing and get him in this year. There's here. no reason why he should not. Here, here. And the steal. Is this Johnson's first point? Yeah. And the pitch goes crazy. First points of his West Virginia career. Coming home. You guys love to see the guys that don't get in that much be able to do something like that, especially with him getting a, a dunk to be the first two. That'll be something that he tells his grandkids about years and years from now. You know, I want to give Bill Cohen some real credit. You know, under, under his tutelage at Northeastern, they have beaten eight Power Five schools. Mm -hmm. They're not afraid to play them. And he says, you know, his overall record may not look good, but if they get in a tournament and they have to go up against someone like that, say, hey, we've already played these people. A few years ago, they had to play Kansas in the first round of the tournament. And he said it was nothing to him because they had played some tougher people earlier. That's why he does it. So I give him a lot of credit for that. Uh, and they, they, no stopping Johnson now. That's five. Foul on Bridges. Northeastern uh, played Syracuse, Old Dominion, Georgia, playing the Mountaineers today. Yeah, that, yeah the, the BPI, the strength of schedule, are at 38th. And with playing West Virginia here, because this game was not originally scheduled, it's going to even get better. And this can only bode well for them when it comes to conference play, playing the type of competition that they have out of conference. Well, yeah, Manga's got 11 points in the game, seven at the free throw line. I take that back, six at the free throw line, including one three in the game. Minute 50. Johnson rejected, shot rejected. Yeah, welcome to the big time. McCabe had nothing to do but throw that up time. To Brillo. He's been throwing up a good number of threes in this second half, but nothing to show for it. He has only one point in the game. Out in front, well past to Bridges. Bridges, six points. Yeah, West Virginia, a lot of conference play coming up. Three of the next four conference games on the road. They do play Texas here. And other than Florida, everything else is conference play from now on out. Let's just hope that uh, COVID doesn't step in and, and stop things. But West Virginia and now is going to go into the conference, and that's something that, uh, that all the teams look forward to. Spencer Mackey is in. Jay Moore is in. Yeah, West Virginia. At Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, do have Texas at home, but uh, West Virginia, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna get right into the meat of things. Three, you know, you, you can tell the young guys when they come in and they're excited. Their their feet don't go with the rest of the body a lot of times, you know. <laughs> they get they get anxious and want to do things, and uh, it just doesn't work. Spencer Mackey in the game, Jay Moore, both walk-ons in the ball game for the Mountaineers. Last 38 seconds, they may not get a chance to get a shot off. Manga. And Manga, 13 point top score for Northeastern. Walker, 10. 
18 for Culver for West Virginia. 13 for Matthews. And West Virginia improved its record to eight and two. 73-51, the well, West Virginia win. Good, solid win for West Virginia. Came out, did what they did. Yeah, did everything inside that they needed to do the second half, and that was, the, uh, that was really the big difference in the ball game here. Our producer, Chuck Scatterlay, our director, Scott Bartlett, and we get ready to say good night from Morgantown. Say good afternoon. West Virginia wins at 73-51 on behalf of Warren Baker and Amanda Maisie. Time to bid you a very pleasant good day.